Welcome to Origin Stories. I'm RD. I'm Parrot. We're telling stories behind the digital art revolution. Each week we interview top artists and live stream with the community. Let's go. Today is tomorrow's origin story. story. Nate Hill, welcome to Origin Stories. Hey there, thanks for having me. And it is early over there. It is, yeah, just after 7 a.m. Uh, here in Melbourne. So I'm usually someone that will get up around now anyway, so all good to go. Well, I still respect it nevertheless that you you making the time early in the morning to join us before your day kicks off. I was keen for a chat. It's all good. This is good. This is good. So you may, you, you may have seen me ask this question, but origin stories has to, of course, start with your origin and you can frame it however you choose. So Nate Hill, what is your origin story? Okay. Um, yeah. Well, I'll probably start um, very early days. I think I've, I've seen a few origin stories already and uh, this seems to be a relative common theme. But um, even as a kid, I was into drawing, um, painting, being creative, you know, sort of always had that, that uh, imagination kind of flowing. Uh, so started out very much uh, interested in art. Uh, through school, always favourite subjects and uh, always loved going to art class. Uh, after um, high school, I actually studied, um, a fine, I did a fine arts degree. I didn't finish it. Uh, that's a whole other story. But, um, but studied uh, photography and printmaking at university. Uh, even the old uh, dark art of the dark room used to process my own photos and all of that kind of stuff. So I really, really love that and kind of miss that to a degree. There's a heap of benefit, obviously, to digital, which yeah. uh, in the whole digital world now, but um, but do very, nos that. very nostalgic concept, right? That of the it dark is. room? It is, yeah. Yeah, it's very tactile and very personal. Like you really, you know, get amongst it. So do, do love that, um, but haven't done it for the longest, longest time. Uh, yeah, so through university um i didn't finish the degree i'll uh drop him back on that uh so i was joining bands at the time i've always been a um, drummer and in bands uh through most of my life as well and so when uh i, I decided to step away from university i was in touring bands uh, and teaching drums for a living and so that kind of just stopped the uh the uh, art course in its tracks, but uh, it was always had a camera in hand, always still very, very interested in the uh, artistic visual side of things, even as being part of part of a band. Um, with my photography, my main interest uh, at that time was uh, taking landscape photos and would even go on to sell some, which kind of piqued my interest in that perhaps that was something that could also generate some income was my photography while I was being in a band and doing other music creative things. Um, so then once uh, bands kind of slowed down and uh, family life started to take over, I uh, started picking up the photography a lot more and I was actually the stay at home dad for, my, for our daughter. And so while I was uh, the stay-at-home dad, I would uh, do some family portraits and sort of have a little sort of side hobby business, I guess I would have called it at the time, doing uh, portrait photography. That, um, that leaked its way into, because I had a lot of contacts in the music industry, uh, doing some uh, promo photos for bands and all of that kind of stuff. From there, the progression was, uh, this was early days of Instagram. Uh, so I was an early adopter on Instagram, which I think when you're an early adopter in anything, which we'll probably talk about a little bit later with crypto, yeah. um, uh, I think it's a great thing. So I managed to build a little bit of a following early on, on Insta. Started finding um, graphic artists to follow. Um, just sort of organically, you know, drawn to anything creative and finding, you know, people that are really good at what they do. Uh, it started sort of making, piquing my interest in perhaps toying around with manipulating photos. Um, so in those early 
early Instagram days, I was just sharing photography and it was basically just landscape or creative shots or, you know, a bit of personal home life and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, once I discovered these graphic artists and designers, um, I wanted to kind of learn how they did what they did. So I started diving into Photoshop and digital art a lot more. Uh, when I found myself doing that, uh, because I was in touch with bands and doing photography for some bands, uh, that kind of moved its way into doing the odd album cover or poster or t-shirt design. Um, and without really ever planning it necessarily, like there was always a, you know, a slight business mind to it, but without really planning it, I sort of ended up very much in the uh, creative music industry doing visuals. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then so that sort of took me through sharing my own personal digital art and weaving my way to, I guess, somewhere near where we are now. So how, how does that jump happen? This is what I'm always fascinated with. You know, when does the concept of minting a piece of art, when, when does that even cross your radar? Well, that's very, very recent for me. So um, Instagram has been my world for even generating um, business or income and all that kind of stuff. So on Instagram, I started noticing a few uh, of the artists that I followed just mentioning super rare and, uh, and this, this whole kind of uh, minting concept. Uh, also very, very fortunate enough to be followed by Blau on Instagram. And uh, I can't thank him enough because he's a massive, massive reason why I'm in the crypto art space. And he yeah. is the owner of your first ever NFT, am I correct? Correct. You are correct. Yeah. 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 So he introduced me to the world. Um, and oh, actually, just prior to that, I probably should say that I did have a, um, someone who followed me that uh, sent me a DM and asked if I was on Super Rare. And I hadn't, at, bef at the time of that message, I hadn't heard of it. So mm -hmm. I started just looking it up um, and just finding out a little bit about the space, not really knowing what to do about it. And uh, to be perfectly honest, the whole cryptocurrency thing, um, I, I didn't have a lot of interest in it, mm -hmm. which seems silly now, but um, <laughs> it's just, uh, that's how it was. Uh, or, or maybe it seems scary. I don't know. There, there's yeah. something there's different, something about new, it. right? Yeah. 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 So anyway, I'd had that, that message, but then um, started talking to Justin Blau uh, about it all and, and it kind of snowballed from there. He helped me jump into the space and then, as you say, he bought my first piece. Uh, and yeah, uh, it, it's been a whirlwind ever since. So that, that piece is hypnotized on Super Rare and take right. us into that. So when, when you, okay, so someone contacts you and, and mentions Super Rare for the first time. At that time, you're not necessarily too keen on crypto, but it sticks in your mind. And then you're talking to Blau and he's pushing you forward um, and maybe you know, giving you some of that key advice to move forward. So when it comes to thinking through you know, your, your artistic history, your photography history, your uh, Photoshop history, manipulating landscapes, bringing them to life. Why hypnotize? Why was that your inception, your genesis NFT? It's a good question. I did um, wrestle with it a little bit uh, and actually got Justin's advice on it, which might tell you a little bit about mm -hmm. why he bought it. But um, uh, look, I feel like in the last probably year, year and a half, um, more people have gravitated towards um, my black and white pieces, mm -hmm. the, um, the, the sort of wild lines. And, I was going to ask you about that one. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to, I love talking about that piece. Um, uh, yeah, so I guess I, I had that in my mind, that, that people were gravitating towards that style. Um, that was the style of piece that the first person that, direct, that messaged me about Super Rare um, had mentioned he thought the uh, that that would work well mm -hmm. on, on you know a crypto art space. So then it was just a matter for me of picking out some of my favourites, some of the more popular kind of pieces. Uh, when I say popular, you know likes on Instagram, etc. Right. Um, and yeah, that one just sort of uh, stuck with me. I, I could add movement to it, which I thought I, and I still feel is an important thing. 
uh, in the space as well. So having something that's that engages, uh, like I still think stills, you know, there are a lot of stills in the space that are absolutely awesome and there's definitely a place for it. But there's something about something that's animated, that moves, that you can engage with um, that I thought really worked. And with a bit of advice from Justin, I, yeah. I landed on Hypnotize. Well, especially your, your style of movement. It's funny you say that because one of your trademarks in my mind, you know, I'm always coming up with my own uh, interpretations of, of an artist's work, but one of your trademarks in my, in, yeah, it's a, it's subtle motion. Yeah. It's, it's not, you know, there are certain pieces you see that are jolting, right? That are, that are knock you out of your chair, right? That, that you have a moment with, but you couldn't necessarily watch for a while, right? You yeah. have your moment, you're, you're, it's an emotive thing, but then it's, I, I kind of have to look elsewhere, you know? Yeah, yeah that's fair. Yeah. Your, your style of motion, uh, infusing it with that landscape is very pleasurable. Like you, you I, I imagine it, it's, it's the kind where if I had a digital frame on my wall and had one of your artworks up on it, that truly is the type of digital art that you could let loop and let loop and let loop and, and not have any, uh, you know, emotion of, I need to stop this now. Yeah, oh, I love to hear that. That's exactly the feel I'm going for uh, when I do it. And I, I like that um, hypnotic, uh, sorry yes. to say, but um, that kind of uh, calming sometimes, I guess, mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, yeah, subtle. I, I've sort of, uh, some aspects of my work are not subtle so I kind of like the fact that if I'm adding movement to something that it you know it can almost take you by surprise like people could scroll past and go hang on a sec is that moving like yes so, yeah yeah I like I like that so b before we before we progress chronologically let me actually pause there uh, and do a couple things so number one I feel like uh, we just pointed to it so why don't you tell us about the artwork on your wall okay yeah so it's a piece uh, that I made in uh, honor and memory of my dad who passed from cancer uh, a few years ago so he lived for the beach for surfing for the, the ocean and so um, I try and create a piece of art at least one piece of art every year for dad and, and this is one that I created and put up a little while ago and uh, it's probably my most shared piece of art on Instagram mm -hmm. um, I don't know the exact numbers it's not something that I look at often but um yeah it kind of just went everywhere and got shared around a lot and it just makes me um I, I love the fact that it got shared around something that I was doing in honor of my dad so it's a special piece for me I um it's another piece that Blau owns too by the way that's great yeah so um it was part of my first um drop on block party which sold out which was a really nice feeling too. So yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a special one for me. I love it. It's a meaningful one. And, and it's amazing to me that, you know, you possess this unique uh, ability to bring uh, a, a tribute and a memory to life like that, that you can create something tangible, right? Yeah. Um, and then now in the digital space as well. Uh, so that, that's, I like, I like too, that you carry that on and you, you say you try to create one, uh, at least one a year, uh, in memory. So, um, cheer, cheers, cheers to your dad. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he, he would have, that would, that would be hanging on his wall. Uh, yeah. I can tell you that. So that's he was a huge, huge supporter of me and my art and, um, yeah, that's a good one. That's wonderful. Um, well, Let's go back. The other question I had on my mind when it comes to your work, we had talked about uh, the subtle motion, right? The very pleasing motion uh, infused into landscapes. Can you tell us about the first time you ever, I know you had the idea, you know, maybe I'll start playing with motion. What was the first moment you added motion to a landscape and you had the aha moment of, oh, that this is a road that I want to continue going down? Yeah, I can. Uh, it's actually uh, a piece the one of one piece that I sold in my nifty drop mm -hmm. that's called land or sea. Um, I, again, a lot of things sort of bounce around, uh, from seeing what other people are doing, wanting to try it out, wanting to see how it would affect my work. Uh, and I saw, uh, a, a um, Instagram artist, oh, I'm trying to think of his name now. 
I'll, I'll, hopefully it'll come back to me. Um, play with a, an app called Plotograph, mm-hmm. which it adds um, motion to stills. And so I downloaded the app, started having a little bit of a play around with it and, and immediately saw that it was going to be a really nice addition, especially to my twisted landscapes. Mm-hmm. Uh, adding that little bit of motion because it's uh, altering a still into something moving there are things that all work with and things that it does not work with and mm-hmm. does not look good at all and uh, water is one of the things that it really works amazing with so having just that little bit of subtle movement of water within something that's either twisting or you know doing something that's slightly unusual and so that's, uh, really that's a, really works. sorry that that's lander c on nifty gateway Correct. Okay. And so that was, uh, I always like to just give people the, the, the context. And so that was part of the drop um, Twisted Landscapes by Nate Hill um, about a month ago. Is that right? G- getting on to be a month ago? Yeah. Yep. And, uh, and Lander C was the one of one auction piece in, in that series. Uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pieces. Now, so I'm looking, I'm looking at that right now uh, on my screen. And so we have the, the sequence, right? We have Paradise and then When We Wake in the Pocket and then Lander C. And they all have a, a similar visual, a vi- similar visual framing where, you know, you're looking at uh, almost this, this, this hole or portal um, that's set into a landscape, set into a cave or set into an ocean or set into a horizon line. Um, how did you hatch the concept for the overall series? Um, uh, uh, fairly early on when I started manipulating photos, again, it was um, my photography sort of always came first. So I've got a database or a bank of uh, landscape photos just as far as the eye can see, so many. Uh, so I like playing around with them. And when I, f- uh, fairly early days, uh, in jumping on Instagram, I started um, really messing around with apps, uh, even to the point of, um, you know, jumping in and beta testing some and starting to know developers of apps that would manipulate photos and all that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, fiddling around with some apps, um, an app called Roll World. I just uh, started messing with what you could do, twisting landscapes into that kind of things just started uh, experimenting with it and and found that these awesome kind of twisty things that did often have that porthole which I, I'm glad you sort of said that because uh, I, I love the idea that it's it's almost like a scene where you could go to another place as yes. well that, so, that is yeah. absolutely the emotion there yeah yeah and it's what I was going for and always with my little guy in there Mm -hmm. to to give it a little bit of scale, a little bit of context. But yeah, it was really born out of experimenting with what I could do uh, with my landscape photography that wasn't just putting a landscape out there. So I really wanted to kind of mess with that idea. And that's, uh, yeah, how the series was born. It's a special one for me. It's an ongoing series. Mm -hmm. I'm still uh, making them and I love making them. But a a special one for me in that it was probably the thing that really um, kicked off the the following that I have on Instagram. They were were the ones that got shared a lot. Um, Mm -hmm. I started getting featured on sites like um, Adobe Photoshop and it kind of all flowed on from there. And it kickstarted the following that you now have on Nifty Gateway because as uh, as I was paying attention that night, uh, I, I did not know of your work. Right. I'll, I'll, I will admit that heading in that heading into that night, I saw Nate Hill. I said, who's Nate Hill? Let me let me go look into this. Yeah. And specifically, and I told you this off air, but uh, now that we're recording, let me say this to everybody in the pocket is one of the most stunning artworks to me that I've seen in recent history in, in terms of seeing it and being overwhelmed by it and saying this, this is this is just incredible. Oh, wow. Um, that means a lot. I really appreciate you saying that. And, you know, it was one of those pieces too, rel- relative to Nifty Gateway. It was a, a, a three, uh, a three artwork sequence, right? An out of three limited edition. And, and yeah. in the context of at the time, and now this has become more, a, a bit more commonplace, but at the time, fairly expensive one, right? Um, yeah. So yeah. it was, it was sold out of three for $1,500, but speaking to the level uh, of your artwork, right? I don't, I don't, 
I never like to make it about the money, but I just want to mention this because of how high the level of artwork it is. They not only sold out instantaneously, but they resold instantaneously. And yeah. so I knew, I told you this later, you were dropping with another artist that I'm fond of. And I, and I almost tore myself completely away from the other artists to focus on trying to get in the pocket. The only reason I didn't is because my computer and my internet is not great. And I knew I was not going to get one of the three, but I sat there and I kind of was looking out of the, out of the corner of my eye at that second, at secondary market. And it went boom, boom, boom. And all, all three pieces changed hands. And uh, I think they found good, good homes. Yeah. Yeah. No, the whole thing overwhelmed me and surprised me. And I really appreciate the kind words about the, the quality of the work that, that uh, I don't want to pass over that. It really means a lot for you to say that. Um, as on the pricing again, too, I, I don't like to focus on the money side of things, but uh, that I was um, very much helped by Tommy on all of that. Tommy at Nifty. Shout out to Tommy. Uh, it's difficult as an artist. I don't know uh, how many people have mentioned this to you, but it's really, really tough thing as an artist to try and price your work. Mm -hmm. I, I, I no really question. struggle, I struggle with that big time. But um, yeah, no, I was, I was super, super nervous before the nifty drop. Um, just worried. I was just hoping I would sell some. I, I was, I was, I was worried that that might have been too much to ask for my work. But um, very, very grateful that uh, it all disappeared. Yeah, it was one of those things where, again, at the time you look at it and it's, it's, uh, you know, this, this is, this is up there in the current context. But then you look at the work itself and you think it's not enough. <laughs> and, and again, and again, let's move past the money side. I don't like to stay there for too long, but uh, I, I do just want to give you some some of the thoughts that were rattling around in my brain that night, uh, because that is truly when Nate Hill became a name that, you know, as soon as Origin Stories was launched, I think we talked very soon after. I let you know that that you were someone that I, I really wanted to understand better and to understand your your journey to the present moment, and it all started there with In the Pocket. Yeah. Wow. That's cool to know. Thank you. Yeah. So let's go. Um, let's, let's jump out of the chronological. I want to go back again. I want to go sure. back again. I want to go back to band life again, because I found okay. myself on, on your website watching a few of, I'm assuming the videos that you put together, right? Yeah. Take me through band. Band life is so fun to me. I'm a musically oriented guy as well. I had bands that I was absolutely in love with. I went through a punk phase. I went through a rap phase. I went through a heavy metal phase. I now have an amalgam of all of those things present in my life. It just depends on the mood and the time and the place. So, yeah. so watching that, you know, I was, I was transported. I watched the complete, you know, the complete music videos that you have posted. Um, oh. Go, go wherever you like, whatever band, whatever band you like, whatever experience you like, but just give us a snippet of that lifestyle. Cool. Um, well, heading right back to when I decided to not complete my degree, which is still something that I don't know how I feel about. Um, I was in a band called Alien Chain, which was kind of heavy, heavy kind of music. Um, and we would just do little mini East Coast of Australia tours. So I've never been, never been in bands that have been any, you know, huge success. But uh, just doing it for, for the love of playing and, and hanging out with mates, uh, you know, touring up the coast in a van. Uh, it's sometimes it sounds more romantic than it actually is, but it's just heaps of fun. Like getting to go to another place, uh, setting up your gear, having people there that are interested in your music. Um, it's, it's a blast. So I really love that. Uh, been in bands that have released some albums and got little bits of radio play here in Australia. But um, yeah, it's, it's always been more about uh, that creative aspect of it. Like I, I probably my favorite part of being in a band is just being in a room and taking uh, just nothing and turning it into a song. So being able to create uh, this song just out of thin air, uh, that part, the songwriting part is definitely my favorite um, thing. And then uh, I guess in more recent times, something I would love to chat about, I'm just gonna grab a prop if you don't mind. Yeah. Is, um, I'm still part of a band, if you want to call it a band. We don't tour, 
but we create music based around my artwork. And so I've got an album here yeah. that is something I released as part of a um, exhibition that I held uh, just over a year ago. And so we take my bits of art. Wow. And create little soundtracks for them. So that's kind of something with music still that I, I, I absolutely love. And, and um, there's the vinyl too, which I think looks awesome. beautiful. Yeah. So can you give us the story behind the, the actually the front, the front facing photo there? Yeah. 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 So that is uh, another, I guess you could call it series that I do where I um, manipulate uh, photos of clouds and turn them into some kind of wild uh you know yeah. scene again with my little silhouetted dude there yeah um and yeah that's something that i love love doing uh i, I love uh i take so i've got a stupid amount of photos of clouds on my phone so i um i love the fact that i can utilize those and they're always going to be different it's going to be something unique like mm -hmm. you hear about a you know a snowflake is always unique you know, it's, I can create something out of these photos of clouds and it's always going to be different and there's going to be something interesting about it to me, so. Now, do you have any plans to bring over uh, songs or, or long, like longer audio clips in conjunction with your art? Um, it's definitely in my mind. Uh, I've got another drop that I'm currently creating and planning out that's, def that's got the music aspect to it so there'll be um we're writing uh full songs for for the pieces of art but the pr probably what will be released will be shorter loops mm -hmm. from the songs and then i i'm trying to work out a way where i could uh still release it perhaps as like an ep a short album of mm -hmm. full songs that that is somehow into interwoven into it all. I, I haven't nutted out the details yet, but it's definitely in my mind to do. It, it, it's very interesting to me. Um, like you said, there there are, there are stills that are beautiful. Uh, weavings that subtle motion into stills is is a different kind of beauty, a different kind of experience. And then similarly, I'm starting to see and hear more and more NFTs that are incorporating uh, sounds small loops and even uh i know known origin uh the time and place that we're recording this just yesterday released two uh two artists two musicians releasing nfts based around around the music entirely yeah wow which is interesting cool. and, and so i yeah. love I, I love that you're considering that um and yeah i can't wait to see that infused with your art especially given that that you have such a you know diverse history and, and a passion for it yeah yeah, no, it's a natural thing for me to want to continue to create music and make that part of uh, what I do with my art. Um, but working with bands uh, and working with music and visuals is just, that's my world. So it, it just feels right to be trying to do that. So mm -hmm. we'll see, see where it takes me. It's like the, the unique variables within your playground, right? It's, it's mixing, yeah. and ma mixing and matching and figuring that out. 100%, that's it. And finding what's what's kind of interesting to people. Like, and I'm wanting, wanting to make something that's engaging mm -hmm. and also not wanting to just settle with something that I'm perhaps comfortable with or do, do, do what's easy. I, I like pushing myself and trying to, I, I'd like to think that, it, you know, if I've, I've done one nifty drop, the next drop I do, I want it to be better. Like, uh, or I want it to be something that captures you in a different way. So I, I don't want to just rest on something that I've done once. Yeah. And I like, I, I really enjoy that you mentioned uh, figuring out what lights somebody else up as well. That it's this, it's this dance, it's this interplay, right? Between your history, your story, your context, your passions, your art, but then also reaching out there and seeing what pieces of that or what combinations of that touches somebody else or, or makes them feel and makes them interested then it becomes this beautiful union yeah yeah I like that and I think I, oh, I'm not sure whether um, artists would always direct their art that way so mm -hmm. do it 
like because it's a very personal thing as well creating art absolutely but, but i think it's uh, i think that that's uh, uh, probably a, a modern social media kind of aspect that has come into artist thinking is being able to engage and mm -hmm. being able to do something that uh, that perhaps gets a reaction from someone so you're still creating from your own personal experiences or a, a vision or whatever that you you personally have but i think it's really important to still have that that side of you that is thinking well how is this going to be reacted to i think it's like an order of operation right and i agree yeah, even even from from you know from the other side of it as as someone who really does appreciate collecting art um that order of operation is important to even me. Like I would never, I would never want an artist to step outside of his or her integrity to think, what would I like? Right. Mm -hmm. It had it starts, like you said, it starts with with your passion in here and you're you're presenting these unique, authentic ideas. Yeah. And and then it's understanding how it's perceived and and enjoyed and and collected. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Definitely in order to I like that. That's good. So that is a, that's a sort of collaboration between artist and collector. How about collaborations? I'm going right in there, segueing into collaborations between artist and artist. Uh, you have two right now. You have two collaborations. That are, that are live. I've actually done a bunch. So it's been particularly uh, within the, the crypto space since I started. Um, I've always loved collaborating with other artists. Uh, I've done heaps of them on Instagram, just mm -hmm. such a cool way to meet, interact with other artists, but also then there's that, here's the order of things again, there's that kind of collective then you're bringing audiences together sure. as well. So there's that really nice thing of being able to drag people who enjoy your own work into someone else's and likewise. Um, but yeah, so um, over the last few months I've been either reached out to by other artists or I've been reaching out to artists that I um, respect and enjoy the work of and, and creating together and it's been awesome. I'm loving it. So the two that you might um, be mentioning that are live at the moment are ones with Corey My uh, My Myers. I hope that's right, Myers. Um, and the other is with Tim and I'm going to stuff up his last name. So... Uh, please, if you're watching this, guys, I love you. Uh, and um, uh, and anyone who's watching who's interested, uh, there's links on my Twitter and whatever to follow. Let, let's let's do this. Let's pause there before you talk about the pieces and let's say it is it is Meyer. So it's it's C Myers, it's C M E Y E R S, and that's Singularity Horizon on Super Rare. And then yeah. the other is uh, and I'm gonna I don't know either, but uh, let's go Tim Rio. Rio Pelli? Well, let's okay. go with this. let's go with the spelling. Let's go Tim, and then it's R I O P E L L E. Fabulous artist, and the collaboration is called Parallel Universe. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, maybe one at a time. Go for it. What uh, what is behind these pieces? What's behind the collaborations? What did you each bring to the table? Okay, cool. So with Corey, um, he and I have uh, quite a similar style of art. So Corey uses uh, a lot of um, grid. A kind of 3D based grids for his landscapes uh, and really cool textures. And I've, I've enjoyed his art for a long time on Instagram. So it felt a little bit like a no brainer to work together because our, our styles uh, really work well together. He actually reached out to me, which was, I felt hugely honored by that. Yeah. Um, he's another guy that's a designer uh, and designs a lot of art in the music world. So um, again, just our worlds colliding, which was really, really cool. And the idea behind it was to, um, yeah, take our two styles and make them work together. So we decided to do two pieces actually. Um, the one that is still available um, is uh, I created the landscape mm -hmm. and my little, my famous little dudes in there. Uh, and Corey then ran with it and added texture, color, um, the cool little porthole that, uh, to, a, to another space uh, in there. And yeah, we really just, the idea was to, to have that kind of sci-fi um, element to, to our work, so. And who wrote the really text? Enjoyed. Sorry? Who wrote the text? Because I think uh, it's- 
Corey, uh, and I believe it's a quote from a sci-fi novel, but don't hold me to that. So let's 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 read the quote because I, I I always I, I love. I love these little things, right? I love, uh, and I want to get back around to your little guy, right? Yeah. I want to get back around to that famous line. Let's hold, let's hold that thought. But I also yeah. appreciate the, the 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 subtleties. You know, you can expand on super rare and and read a little mini paragraph or a couple lines, and it says, "quote The seemingly infinite horizon suddenly reached its end as the gate opened. Time has both ended and begun. I have reached both the beginning and the end." End quote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so it's yeah, and it speaks to the portal. It does. Yeah. yeah. So wait, all right, so wait, time out. Let's talk about the little guy. Okay, my little guy. Yeah. <laughs> where, did he, where did he come from? Who is he? Does he represent someone to you? Um, maybe. Uh, it's, again, that thing that, for me, um, personally making the pieces, I would say he represents me. Um, but I love the idea that everyone's going to see that and read that differently. Mm -hmm. um, so I would never want to impose the fact that it's me uh, into the art, but it, it's just that sense. I, I, I love having him in there for that sense of discovery and that sense of um, uh, scale to a piece. And uh, like, you know, it's like you are, you know, uh, seeing something unfold before you. So I, I love the story aspect to having a, a, a little guy in these uh, unusual places, if you like. Yeah, it's, uh, it makes the landscape grand. It really yeah. does. And, and like yeah. you use the word scale, I think that's so important. And looking at that, looking at that little guy often, in, often set in the distance, it really does feel like it's artwork that is larger than yourself. Yeah, that's definitely what I'm going for. So... And, and the story aspect, you know, you're wondering how he got there or, mm -hmm. or you know, what's unfolding before him. So it's, yeah, uh, it's just something that, that I, I, I did to start with because I thought the Twisted Landscapes needed some con uh, context, mm -hmm. uh, like just needed, uh, like I thought they were um, interesting to look at on their own, but I, I, I really wanted to, a story in there or something to give it uh, the feel that it could be real. It could be another place, mm -hmm. you know, not just a pretty artwork, but that this is a, this is something that could be going on. So yeah, once I started um, toying with that idea, I just couldn't leave him out. <laughs> so let's, I love that. Um, and again, it's one of those nuances that that makes it uniquely yours. You know, even when it's a collaborative effect, you you see a lot of Nate Hill in there. Um, and let's let's shoot over to the other piece. Let's shoot over to Parallel Universe with Tim. Um, yeah. How did you guys collaborate on that one? Uh, again, he reached out to me. Tim, I've got to say, um, everyone that I've met in this uh, space, and and you know, uh, pr prior to uh, doing collaborations, uh, just always so awesome to work with and uh it's great seeing how people go about their work but tim tim's a gem like honestly someone for someone that i've never met and i've never actually even spoken to you know outside of typing you know mm -hmm. on the phone or on email uh he's just such a he seems like such a wonderful human being uh it's been a joy working with him uh and when i say working with him he did the lion's share of work on this collab. So all, all credit to, to Tim. Mm -hmm. uh, he, his concept was to bring my kind of um, landscapes and style uh, to a, a 3D kind of world. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, that porthole thing keeps coming back. There's a, there always seems to be a, a journey um, with these pieces. So he, he had a strong concept. And so I sent him some art. And, and we were working towards the idea of him utilizing my art and my style, but bringing it into the, the 3D world. And, and he, he did the work on that. I'm not a 3D artist. I have mm -hmm. basic understandings of 3D. My little figure is actually a 3D figure that I created. But um, yeah, Tim, hats off to Tim. I'm, I'm a huge fan of his and I, I love that piece. And what's interesting about this one is that your little guy actually gets quite big. 
And yeah. if you look at it another way, your little guy may even be the portal as he comes towards the screen and you get lost in, in him, which yeah. is a really interesting twist. Yeah, absolutely. I love that when Tim sent that across. It's absolutely perfect. The way it loops. So, yeah, you're coming towards the guy and inside, perhaps. Yeah. It's a, it's a and it's a very it's a very very nice loop um and and a lot of a lot of layers it has it has almost uh scenes to it yeah yeah it's like there's almost like acts acts to the story so you've yeah. got the kind of wild stuff then you're going into the 3d world and then you're meeting meeting my guy so nice. and let's cool. go to uh let's go to color because as as i now your nifty gateway drop has a lot of color to it, right? The lands, the landscapes are in color. But if you look at your super rare, I think you're overwhelmed by a sense of, of black and white, of, of your black and white landscapes. But there are a few that are curveballs. And one has some, I don't even know. So first contact, yeah. I mean, first, first contact, which is a beautiful, a beautiful piece. Um, is there subtle color on that landscape? Or, or there, is. there is, okay. Yeah, so the uh, the landscape itself, yeah, is kind of a blue, mm -hmm. I guess, you know, a bluish kind of hue, uh, made out of a cloud, by the way. So that landscape is actually a manipulated cloud that's been turned into a to land. Um, and that is actually part of this series, by the way. Mm -hmm. So if you click on that, um, that piece on Super Rare, it has a soundtrack to it, and mm -hmm. that's... That was made by myself and my bandmate Jeff. Uh, and yeah, uh, I, I do love using color, but I've also got that side of me where uh, the black and white lines has, has become a bit of a distinct feature of my work. So yeah, I, I, I don't intentionally necessarily gravitate to one or the other. It's, they're just different pieces, different things that I do. And, and then the other one is all all the great minds, yeah. Right, and that has some uh, s some s slivers of vibrant color set into the the background, uh, reaching up into the sky of the piece. What's the story behind that one? That's a that's another collab actually, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, a guy on Twitter that's simply known as Frank. Uh, but he, so he brought the color to that one. That was a, a case of I reached out to him. Uh, to collaborate again uh, felt like our styles um, really complemented each other uh, and so he brought his color and and um, style to the the sky on that one uh, and well, I love how that turned out too and there are three little guys in that piece yes yep go figure it's a, it's like an audience <laughs> it <is. laughs> it's an audience was, to the uh, color yeah this is true that was uh, Frank's decision uh he took my little guy and made a couple more appear uh -huh. so uh, uh, and i i love it again so it's just something that's different and it put his fingerprint on the piece as mm -hmm. well uh so he has a lot of pieces that uh, have uh re sort of repeating people almost like they're clones mm -hmm. um repeat after each other so uh, yeah that was definitely one of his touches and i really really like it enjoy it on that one and the final one that I'd love to talk about on Super Rare, uh, similarly to on Nifty Gateway, uh, I told you that In the Pocket captivated me. There was one on Super Rare that blew me away. And yeah. it was a shared, I think it was a shared passion for a movie that you then turned into a piece of art. And that movie is Soul. Yeah. And the artwork is called This Is Your Moment. Yeah. Yeah. Literally inspired by the, seeing the movie uh it's very easy to see um when you have a look at the piece uh the part of the movie that um was uh the inspiration for the piece uh and just it was one of those moments i, I guess all artists would have where you are just you see something straight away so I, I as soon as i saw the movie that scene uh, had the feels from the movie I just mm -hmm. knew exactly what I was going to make straight away like so I literally went away from the movie made that piece it came together super quick because I had a really clear idea in my mind and a direct idea of what I would like to do and uh, bang it's it just it came about and it's instantly became one of my favorite pieces that I've ever made and it is also currently my most liked 
image ever on Instagram. I believe it. Uh, and it is, it is something that it has layers to the emotive experience, right? Because I think if you look at it in one light, you could say this is, um, and I don't mean to use this word negatively at all. This is a, a, a simple piece, yeah. right? It has yeah. very, very few components to it. Um, Correct. you know, it has your, your light and then it just dissipates right around. Uh, yeah. then you have your, your little guy heading into the light if you've seen the movie right and you know yep. there's no motion in the piece but my, my mind at least is sending him you yep. know towards and into the light and then there's your walkway and yep. then there's this um the perfect black background that wraps all of that at once and so looking at it one way you could say this is uh there, there are simple components here looking at it the other way and especially if you have the context and the story of of the movie um I just feel like you approached it from the perfect angle. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. It's just one that, that worked. I, I, I don't know what, what else you can say. It's one of those, you hear bands sometimes say, or songwriters say that a song just spilled out of them. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and often those songs are ones that go on to be hits or, or whatever. So sometimes the, the creative process, it, it just works and something just happens and it's and it's a beautiful thing so i feel like that was definitely one of those situations for me yeah it comes through and it sounds like a lot of people on instagram agreed right yeah yeah and <laughs> uh, like in the comment section like you just see one word soul 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 like people just <laughs> bought into it and understood it straight away which was really nice that's great that's great um nate do you know do you know the game uh no what's the game the game the game is the lightning round the game oh, the is the lightning round. <laughs> okay okay you All ready right. for it i'm ready i'm ready so i'm gonna fire 10 concepts questions sentences at you the goal is just give your snap reaction if you are compelled if you have your soul moment and you want to go off on a wild tangent you are more than welcome to do so uh, oh. If it's more so something that you can encapsulate in a word or a sentence and, and you snap it out and you want to move right on, we can do that too. But it's meant to be 10 prompts that will take us down 10 different pathways. I'm ready. All right. The Nate Hill lightning round. Here we go. Nate, number one, if you could go anywhere in the world that you have not yet been to specifically to incorporate the landscapes in your artwork, where would you go? Easy, easy answer. Iceland. Iceland. And, and now I'll deviate and ask you why. Uh, oh, just there is something mystical or magical uh, to me in my mind about that place. Uh, anytime I see any photos of it, it's, it's a recognizable place, but it also could be, you know, somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like uh, I could make an unbelievable series of twisted landscapes based around the uh, imagery from, from Iceland. Plus, I love the movie um, Walter Mitty. I don't know if you've seen. Yeah. That. Seen and, uh, Secret Life of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, it, it's got some, you know, uh, amazing imagery from Iceland in there as well. So, yeah, that's, that's an easy no-brainer for me. Uh, yeah. Take me there tomorrow, please. Sounds like a bucket list item. It is, yeah, definitely. Good. Number two, favorite piece of art that is not your own? Oh, and I know there are many, many, many. So it's all about just what grabs you in this particular moment. What pops into your mind? Um, that one's caught me off guard. Um, That's the whole idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have. I do have so many, so many um, artists and artworks that I admire. All right. So the very first thing that comes to my mind right now, because it's recent for me. And it's going to be another person that I'm shocking with names. Um, Reef, Reefrick. Um, Anadol. Anadol. There you go. All right. So he has a piece in the uh, National Gallery of Victoria um, at the moment that's in the foyer that is a massive, massive screen. Mm -hmm. And he has his, um, his artwork on it playing uh, through the day. And it, I honestly, I could stand there for hours and watch it. Uh, he, his work is phenomenal and so this one particular one in our gallery is um, it's sort of framed like it is in a frame 
and then the, the visuals look like they, they come outside of the frame, even though obviously it's just a flat screen. So the way that, I, that, that has been created uh, and just how engaging it is and how beautiful it is, it's, it's striking. And the scale of it, it's like, it's huge. So it's in this massive foyer of our, of our, um, our gallery in, in Melbourne and it, it's amazing. So there you go. There's a, there's a current piece of work that uh, blows my mind. That's that's a really good one. And I do have to say, when uh, his his first drop on Nifty Gateway, and now he has uh, he's done his second one, but his first drop, when I was first exploring who is this person, and I went to his website. I don't know if you've ever been to his website, but his website is grand okay. because it brings the, it sounds like, I mean, what you're describing may have been in there, but his website just overwhelms. It has all of his uh, various museum displays. And you yeah. can see, speaking of like, you know, you're a little guy, you could see the people, yeah. you know, interacting with walls of, yeah. of his art. And it just looks spectacular. So yeah. I, I will say that is uh, someone that blew me away with yeah. um, how what he's doing was able to be infused into his website and then obviously jump off the screen at me. Yeah. Yeah, uh, abs absolutely mind blowing, and uh, honestly, could stand there and watch it for hours. So, yeah. that's, uh, which I don't know if you could say that about a lot of artwork that you could stay and watch it for a long period of time. But yeah, yeah. it's incredible. Some might say that about Nate Hill's artwork, but that's all. Very kind story. of you to yeah. say. <laughs> number three, Nate Nifty Gateway. Yes, um, life changing. So. I, I do grasp the, the fact that it is an, a huge honour to be on that platform. And uh, when I got accepted, uh, I probably didn't know just how much of an honour it was. Um, I definitely knew it was, was special and exciting, but like, yeah, uh, it's been a, an amazing, mind-blowing uh, nothing could have prepared me for a uh, kind of experience having them drop my artwork. So I'm hugely grateful to the team there. Um, I think it's a platform that is really um, special in that it can, it, it's that bridge, I feel, between um, cryptocurrency and crypto uh, and the crypto art. And it gives people an in because you don't have to purchase in cryptocurrency. Uh, it gives people an, an into that world that may be too scared to, to deal with crypto. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I love what they do there. Uh, I think that the drops are always exciting uh, and interesting. Uh, I love that they have the, the different aspects of additions and different things like the packs. And the, there's all sorts of ways that you can um, collect uh, through that site so it's, it's an exciting platform and to, to be able to go there and see the, I think I saw my art sitting next to um, PAX art too uh, on, on the side in people's you know collections and what have you that just blows my mind so I, uh, I'm very very grateful to be on there and I don't think that it's out of turn for me to say that I'm cooking up something else to for uh, for the future this is exciting this is exciting yeah. number four if you could infuse any existing band's music into your nfts with no ip issues you could just run rampant and grab whatever you wanted what band would you choose oh it's another hard one there's too many <laughs> i've got some favorite bands that would obviously be something it'd be cool to, to you so one of my the bands that i love is a band called something for kate uh, they're not probably not hugely globally known. They're a Melbourne band, but um, I've been following them for a long time and I'm a huge fan of them. So that would be one. Um, but I like, a lot, I like a lot of instrumental post-rock music. Mm -hmm. So um, there'd be bands like Mogwai. Um, uh, just trying to think of some off the top of my head. Uh, some stuff that's sort of a bit more instrumental, cinematic, cinematic, but also has just because I, I like my kind of rock alternative music, yeah. so that has hints of that in it as well. So I guess you know 
anything along those lines I'd take. Okay. Okay. Number five, super rare. Yes. Uh, well, it was my uh, genesis and my start starting point to, to this whole journey for me. Uh, another site that I think is awesome for digital artists. Um, it's interesting to me, I guess this is the same with Nifty too, like that whole curated aspect of it. So mm -hmm. that the fact that it's not necessarily easy um, to get on that platform as an artist, I, I, um, I guess there's a little bit of a wrestle with that sometimes for me, just thinking about people that desperately want in that are finding it hard to get in. I, I find that um, I don't know what to feel about that. I don't know if that's fair to say. Sure. Um, because I, I have artist friends that are asking me about it and it's one of those things you, you want to be able to say, hang in there, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, hopefully it'll happen. So, yeah, it's an interesting one. But I understand from the other side of that coin, um, the whole fact that it, it, it being curated and a little bit tougher to get in makes it special. You know, there's something kind of really... Uh, nice about that for collectors and for artists that that it's a place where you know not everyone can be there so it, it, there is something special about that so there's a there's a push pull for uh, in that for me but yeah uh, awesome awesome space very thankful again to be on there uh, and very thankful to people willing to spend money on on my art on there it, it, it's heartwarming and and encouraging and uh, and allows me to focus on art rather than you know the grind of freelance work I guess yeah and Nate Nate Hill's genesis and the home of all of those wonderful collaborations that we've talked about yeah this is true number six a concept that you have not tackled yet that at some point in the future you'd like to explore um another tough one it's too early for these deep questions my friend <laughs> <laughs> now we're running into the limitations of an early morning yeah this is true um well n n this is very very vague but i i love storytelling mm -hmm. so i guess for me I would like to be able to, I, I love doing a series of works. So I, I guess for me, tapping into another story, being able to find another a narrative or another twisted landscapes, if you want, but not that. So being able to find uh, another universe to kind of tell a story through. Is that too vague? Not at all. I don't know. The, be the beauty of it is you can take it wherever you like. Yeah, this is very true. <laughs> There's no is wrong answer here. <laughs> oh, good. That's good. I passed. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, uh, nothing specific presently uh, as far as I, I haven't got any set goals for a series or a piece, but there's always an evolution for me. So as I was alluding to before, I don't want to just sit with what I've done. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking for that next thing. I love it. Number seven, speaking of that next thing, another dream collaboration. Oh, who would that be with? Uh, let me think. Um, is this like, you know, if you could literally collaborate with anyone in the world. You could, you could force someone's hand in the most positive of senses. And, 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 and today, uh, I could tele teleport this person to your home and you could spend all day working on a fabulous piece of art together. Oh, well, there you go. Then the uh, refit that we talked about, Anadol, that we talked about earlier. How, how good would that be? Mr. Anadol, I hope you're hearing this. I'd love to, <laughs> I would love to see, I, I, that, that's an interesting one to me. I, I, I would, um, yeah, if we could, if we could somehow lock you guys in a room for twenty four hours, I would be very interested to see what you'd come out with. <laughs> I love that. That would be cool. Maybe one day. Uh, Maybe one. Fingers crossed. I do have. Um, uh, I will say. I won't say who they are yet because nothing's set in stone. But I do have some more that I've 
uh, started discussions with. Uh, and I'm very excited about some future potential collaborations that are happening. So it's good. Okay. You're dropping us some, some nice cliffhangers today. Yeah, little cliffhangers, you know. Can't give away too much. Got to leave people wanting more. Of course, of course. So we're eight and nine uh, are going to go hand in hand. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to, to, to put some shine on some other artists. And I want to go down two different roads to do so. So number eight is going to be, you mentioned some, some folks who have been contacting you and saying things like, uh, hey, how do I get on Super Rare? Or I haven't been able to yet. And you want to be able to tell them, keep on keeping on. What is one artist that comes to mind? Could be someone on Instagram, could be someone, you know, personally, could, wh wherever you want to go with it. But what is one artist that you, uh, you see some big things for in the future and maybe people should keep an eye and an ear out for? Ooh. Um, well, one that I did a collaboration with, who uh, James is his name, but he goes by the Gentleman Bronco okay. on Instagram. Um, we, we have a collaboration that sold on um, Super Rare on my profile, but he's currently really keen to jump into the space, but he's another one that I've been encouraging to hang in there and, and, um, and just see how it plays out, I guess. Um, so he's definitely a guy, he, he creates these really awesome artworks. Uh, one of his series, ongoing series, is based around orbs. Uh, and I, I honestly, I genuinely think that he would do great in the space. So he'd be definitely one to keep an eye on. And hopefully, fingers crossed for James, that he'll uh, be able to get approved somewhere like Super Rare. I, I believe he's applied a bunch of places. So this is all just in the last month or so. So hopefully he can find his way in. So that's one. Um, I don't know off the, off the top of my head. There's too many. Um, I'm, I'm sort of blanking on. Uh, oh, one one, is, one is, yeah, one is fantastic. And let's let's use this moment to give a shout out to James and say say yeah. keep keep on keeping on, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So everyone, anyone watching the gentleman Bronco on uh, Instagram. Perfect. Uh, now let's flip over to someone who is on a platform or multiple platforms is more established and just someone that you can't take your eyes off of. And you, uh, I'm, I'm taking Mr. Anadol off the table. We That's can't, fair. we can't go back to him. Somebody else, um, just to, just to say, uh, their, their work has captivated you specifically. Yeah. Well, again, heaps and a perfect time to say that the jumping into this community, I've probably every single person says this, but seemingly, but it's such an awesome community and yeah. so encouraging and uh, everyone's so willing to um, promote other artists and people and, uh, and look out for other artists. It's, it's been genuinely heartwarming and awesome. Uh, Victor, uh, who we mentioned earlier, He'd be one artist I'd absolutely love the work of. Uh, uh, and I put my money where my mouth is and bought some of his work. Um, same with Bill. Uh, and that's Victor Mascara, right? Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, Bill, I don't know how to pronounce his username, but the Skulls, Bill. Um, Bill Ellis. There you go. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we fixed it once and for all in our recent uh, whiskey roundtable. We fixed the pronunciation one. We, he, he put it out there and, and now everyone knows. Bill Ellis. Excellent. Bill Ellis. There you go. So I own one of his pieces as well. Um, uh, Aphoria as well. Yeah. Uh, Alexi's uh, absolutely awesome. I've been a long, long, long time follower. We're uh, Instagram OGs. So been a long time uh, follower of him. So another artist I'm a big fan of as well. But there's so many, like, Honestly, I could just sit here and keep listing. Uh, but yeah, well, so those, there, are, there, those are three pretty good ones. There's some good ones to start with, aren't they? Yeah. All right. And number 10, if you could instantly insert a matrix like chip into your brain and have no effort and no pain to do so, and you could acquire any other artist's skill set, or if you prefer to leave the artist out of it, just a skill set in general, to immediately infuse with your own. What it, who is it, or, or if you prefer, what is that skill set and why? Um, 3D, I think. Mm -hmm. So, so the likes of Euphoria or um, uh, F Render. I don't know if I'm allowed to say. 
You could say anything you want, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> but you know who I'm talking about. Yes. Um, so that, that kind of high-end um, 3D uh, work, I would love to... It, it's sort of been on my mind to jump in and, and start sort of studying it and tinkering with it for some time now. But as an artist who's also a freelancer trying to um, earn a living from their art, you find yourself... Uh, doing a, a lot more um, of the grind and the work mm -hmm. that you need to do um, and it gives you less time to, to spend on I guess uh, learning a skill like that so I've, I've got my skill set which I, I love and enjoy using um, and and value obviously mm -hmm. but uh, yeah I'd love to you know be able to just implanted uh, matrix style some some 3d skills would be pretty awesome yeah. And I also like that you've, you've poked at 3D a bit through your collaboration, right? Through, through a collaborative effort, right? You've kind of earmarked it. You've said, I'm interested in this and, and you've gone so far as to collaborate on it. So who knows? Maybe one day, maybe you will just, uh, you know, get over to Iceland, post up for a few months and, uh, and, and bring some, some 3D with you to, to learn in the meantime. Let's, uh, yes. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so Nate, uh, we started with your origin story. Uh, and we like to say, you know, today is tomorrow's origin story and you dropped us some teasers, but what else can you tell us? What, what is next? What, what might we expect from Nate Hill in the near or distant future? Uh, I've got some sizable projects on the go. So there's, there's definitely another drop, um, coming next month. Um, I won't say too much more about it. So I alluded to earlier that there's going to be a music aspect to it too, um, which currently working on. Uh, then there's another big project that I'm working on. Again, it's quite, uh, it's going to be a massive tease because I can't really say much about it. But so um, after a, a personal drop um, that's upcoming, I've got a, another one that's, uh, it's difficult to know what I can say about it. So it's not just me involved. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I'm creating uh, art and animated art uh, for another project that's, that I'm, I'm excited about that's going to be pretty pretty huge. So it's going to be something that's a, a bit different uh, and people perhaps may not expect from me. Oh, there you go. Ooh. There's a good little line you threw in there at the end. <laughs> Some people may not expect from you. All right, we're going to be keeping our eyes and ears open. Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited to, yeah, I'm excited. There's some really cool things happening. It's, it's, um, I feel like, I don't know whether other people have mentioned this to you, but I feel like it's such an exciting time for a, a digital artist. Uh, and this is such an exciting space, but you feel like, you feel sort of, I feel a self imposed pressure to um, make the most of it to really jump in and, and explore everything that you could possibly do and really push yourself um, to create, perhaps with an urgency that may not have been there before. I don't know if that's fair to say, but it's uh, there's a lot of adrenaline attached to all of this at the moment. It's sort of all go all the time. We talked earlier, I think, I think it was off recording about how uh, a, a day feels like a week in crypto space or that that kind of thing so yes yeah some it's might say uh this is your moment right hey there you go i like it yeah i see what and, you did there yeah and, and it makes it it just it hits home i think no matter what um you know aspect of the digital art world someone is involved in whether it be artist collector investor platform brand, whatever. I think everyone is having that emotion right now, knowing that something very, very special is happening right now, knowing that it's happening at an absolutely mind melting uh, rate of growth. Uh, I don't, I think that, that mind melting rate of growth makes it very hard to predict exactly what even two months from now is going to look like. But I think we're all, we're all buckled in and hopefully enjoying the ride in the process. Yeah, totally, totally enjoying the ride. There's, there's an element of you've got to put your best foot forward, though, all the time, too. So I, I guess as an artist or me personally, I'm feeling that, you know, there's a little bit of self-imposed pressure to, to uh, make sure you're nailing it. Mm -hmm. well, I think that's why 
that's why you are who you are, right? Or why uh, maybe your your work is becoming by the day, I think, more and more revered and, uh, and, and seen and appreciated in the space. So keep that positive pressure. Keep it positive, of course, but, but keep, oh, that, keep that yeah. positive pressure uh, cooking over there. Nate, yeah. thank you. So thank you for bringing us into your home this morning, this early morning. Um, and thank you. Thank you for sharing so much. Uh, all your art on Super Air on Nifty Gateway, uh, your your album art, and 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 that very special piece of art on the uh, the wall just over your right shoulder. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure and a privilege. Nate Hill's origin story. We will uh, anxiously await what is next. Take care, my friend. Thank you.